7 billion parameter large language models have absolutely dominated 2024. We've seen massive improvements in progress, and they're already starting to nearly compete with D4 and Gemini 1.0. However, we're approaching a time where even smaller models are matching the capabilities of these 7 billion parameter models. And the question is, are these better? Are these more capable? Or can these actually even match the capabilities of something like Mixtral 8x7b? Especially since a lot of progress in 2023, in terms of research and just execution, pointed to larger models always being the answer. The idea being that larger models would always give us better insights and better inference performance and just the ability to answer bigger questions. We've seen models like Quen 1.5 that will give you a range from a basically 800 million parameter model all the way past 70 billion parameter models. And it's interesting to see the difference in performance. But what's cool is now we're seeing really small models that diverge from that kind of idea of initially going small to large and just paring down as the model gets smaller. Of course, we have to pick trade Trade-offs when it comes to performance or capability, but those trade-offs are getting more and more reasonable, especially as it starts to be much more common to have AI on edge devices like Apple Watches or iPhones. And we try to ask ourselves what we really need to make API calls for and what these small models can really do. So the model I want to talk about today is called Phi2 Orange version 2, and its origins are pretty interesting. Of course, the biggest thing to mention here is that this is a 3 billion parameter model that's currently at the top of the open LLM leaderboard. And it draws off of a few really interesting developments by Microsoft. But what's cool is it shows that the 3 billion parameter contingent of AI research still has a long way to go and actually hasn't been that thoroughly explored, which means there's a lot of progress we could make in 2024. So why do these models matter? Are they really as capable as 7 billion parameter models? Do they really stack up to what GPT-4 can do on your iOS device? And how or why should you use them in early 2024? Welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. I'm going to make a different video about the advantages of small LLMs, especially once we get below 1 billion parameters. And in my opinion, the advantages of these tiny LLMs are not talked about enough. Of course, a lot of times these LLMs, when they get to be this small or below a billion parameters, start to become more toy than something that you can actually use to do a lot of things with. And although that's accurate, I think the really cool thing that's overlooked is that small LLMs need way less hardware. They don't really even need GPUs. Of course, Apple has their uh, neural compute cores in their new Apple Watch chips. But the thing is, uh, once a model is small enough, you can execute quite quickly. You can put it on basically anything. And even when you're running it on the edge, the time to spin up an LLM or the time to inference drops precipitously. And what's cool is then the limitations of needing GPUs or specialized hardware or being bound to one platform, like for instance, Apple's MLX platform starts to go away. And once that's the case, there's a question of capability, obviously. So obviously there are still very big uh, compromises. In this case, with 3 billion parameter LLMs, most of the time this compromise is actually that the model can only work in kind of a QA perspective and the system prompts are quite restrictive. Also, there's certain cases where the context the model has been trained on is pretty limited. But with this model, Phi2 or version 2, I've been really impressed. So where did we start with these models in terms of models that are just below 7 billion parameters and can actually do something? So it's no surprise that the reason it's called Phi2 Orange version 2 is it's actually based on Microsoft's Phi2 model. And Phi2 was a big deal when it was released last year because it was one of the first transformer models with under 3 billion parameters, 2.7 billion to be exact, that were able to actually be usable and do things that at that point uh, we thought were only possible with state-of-the-art 13 billion parameter models uh, at the time from Meta. And what was also cool is these models were made usable by some of the early findings of realizing that human feedback or RLHF actually sometimes isn't as good as synthetic data. So a lot of Phi2 was actually trained with textbooks and existing kind of documentation and then documentation that was actually created as a result of that with other LLMs. It was one of the first times we realized that, wow, like you can use results of an LLM to train a smaller LLM and actually achieve better performance, which is pretty cool. Uh, ironically, muzzling these models also hinders their performance. So what was funny was this is actually one of the most open models Microsoft has released to date, other than the initial version of Dolly 3, which I was actually able to make hilarious images of Patrick and SpongeBob stuck in North Korea. Anyway, the funny thing is they literally say here, the intention behind crafting this open source model or the original version of Phi2 is to provide the research community with a non-restricted small model to explore vital safety challenges, such as reducing toxicity, understanding societal bias, enhancing controllability, and more. 
And the fact that massive tech companies are talking about controllability uh, it should kind of be concerning. But what's good is at least it's open source and Microsoft isn't hoarding this. So there are another set of benefits that Phi 2 Orange version 2 actually gets from building on top of Phi 2. One is that it uses Hugging Face's Transformers library. So executing it is actually quite easy. The other big update with this version of Phi 2 Orange version 2 is that it actually just uses ChatML as the prompt format and the system prompt is a little bit more simple as a result of this. And if we look at what it's been built on top of, it's been actually built on top of uh, Intel Orca DPO pairs, Slim Orca DDupe, and Metamath QA, which in theory helps it with certain reasoning capabilities. We've seen a lot of merges that tend to use uh, Metamath as well, and it seems to help uh, even models that are only meant for doing kind of verbose prose-based, kind of writing-based tasks actually better at that since they can think through problems a bit better. And the biggest thing to note with this model is that right now it's at the very top of the open LLM leaderboard for 3 billion parameter models. And I like that they keep having to add new common categories in this because these are getting really popular. So if we look at ARC, Heliswag, MMLU, and a few of the other benchmarks they choose to use here, it's like they've added uh, Winograd just this week. The average score here is around 63.67. You can see in ARC it's also doing quite well. And if we compare this to some of the more common 7 billion parameter models, you can see that 7 billion parameter models score about 10 points higher or a little bit more. What's cool is that's actually really within shooting distance of some of these 13 billion parameter models that are also not that far ahead when it comes to performance. So of course, you know, 77 is still a really good 13 billion parameter model. It's not that far up from the 7B models that actually compete quite closely with Phi 2 Orange version 2, which is to say that how we train models is getting more efficient and how we bin pack and choose what information we shove into them that they have to carry around in their parameters and their weights is getting a lot better. And merging is sort of a part of this. There's also some compression going on but more of it is understanding what the value of certain trade-offs you make when we train and understanding what actually results in more usable uh, enhancement in terms of how people use these models. And the QA kind of chat structure is a big part of that. And Microsoft is really interested in this. It's not surprising. Apple has also been working on this for some time and they've released a lot of this in December of 2023, so not that long ago at Neuro IPS 2023. And what's curious is when we look at Phi 2, its capabilities are still pretty widespread. For instance, in terms of common sense reasoning, language understanding, and math encoding, it still does quite well. It's not, you know, fully punching with the 7 billion parameter model, but it is usable, especially when we compare it to Llama 2. And ironically, a lot of data that Microsoft has given us actually has to do with how offensive the models are. And the irony is it turns out that when you make models too small, they're actually more offensive. And of course, the definition of what offensive is is kind of interesting. I will link to this below, and it's actually a curious read when you look at it. Now, what I do want to do is compare to the latest benchmarks of Phi 2, where Microsoft here has straight up compared uh, Phi 2 2.7b to Mistral 7b, and Llama 270B to 70B. Uh, so what's crazy is at least in terms of the benchmark they use, Phi 2 is within striking distance of Llama 270B. In terms of language understanding, which is a little bit easier to eke out just because of how long we've been doing this with LLMs, it's less capable because there are more subsets of things that could happen when you're asking to write a paragraph of text as opposed to asking kind of a binary question or a series of questions. Coding is another one where these models have been really pretty good. Although with Phi 2, honestly, I think it's so good just because Microsoft has a lot of very, very good data for training on this. And also it was a clear point of focus when picking skills to make Phi 2 really good at. So let's actually try using it. Uh, what's cool is this is actually still available in an open inference API, which is kind of cool. And I want to see what we can actually get this to do. So first off, I want to say, I want to use the shirt test. So basically I'm saying I got my shirt wet and whether or not I should use sunlight or moonlight. All right, this is actually good. So it understands that sunlight outside is hot and moonlight is not. And it broke it down into two different questions, which is kind of interesting. So it, I guess that drawing it or whether I should draw it and then sunlight or moonlight were the questions and uh, outside was just a parameter. So sometimes these small models will get hooked up, will get really caught up on what, what outside is, but that's not bad. 
So now I'm going to ask one of these basic multi-step reasoning questions, which is the, I bought two avocados at some price, sold them, and then bought some more, sold them again, what's my profit? All right, so it's telling us each step it's taking to do this. All right, so it looks like it gave us a basic kind of pseudocode to calculate this. It didn't actually give us the answer, which is sort of interesting, but it does give us some code that shows how to do this, which is a little underwhelming, but these models are a little bit harder to interact with. All right, so I will say that the outputs are a lot better when you use system prompts. You don't really have to, but if you don't, the model has a hard time understanding uh, when it should stop providing output, and that can sometimes be a little bit complicated. So I'm going to try the function uh, of asking kind of about the oranges again, and we'll see what happens. Word problems, which outputs... Great, so it gave us a basic equation, and there we go. So now it gave us what we want. So curiously, or not really surprising at all, using instruct prompts is kind of necessary when you use these models, as they're so small that they don't have a great way of understanding what you want, uh, especially if you give it too many input tokens. And the tokenizers on these work uh, pretty differently, just in terms of where they decide to point the focus of the LM, which is... A way I like to describe this because otherwise um, pointing at abilities isn't as meaningful with super small models like this. So now I'm going to try one more step and I'm going to add one more kind of query to this, which is I then buy three more and sell them for nine. So basically losing money and I want to see if it understands that that still isn't a profit. So let's see. And it looks like it got it because it understands here that our total revenue was $15. Our total cost was $14. So in the end, we actually only made $1. So again, the instruct prompts really make all this work and it helps it really manage how many output tokens it's using in a much more reasonable way, especially when it understands what's coming from the user and what's coming from itself. So for one final question, I'm actually going to ask it another derivation of this shirt problem, and we'll see if we can get that to work. The idea of this question is that we're leaving it open-ended, so it doesn't know how big the space where we're drying shirts is. It doesn't understand if there's a limitation for how long in the day we can dry shirts. We're just leaving it to kind of guess. And I'm presenting this as a word problem with a single answer, and hopefully this tries to figure out what that single answer is. This is something that even sometimes GPT-4 can struggle with, and Cloud3 from Anthropic tends to get this kind of stuff right. Curiously, it biased here for the take where, you know, it, it's one shirt per hour, or, or it can't be parallelized, which is kind of interesting. It's not the most surprising, but let's see what it gave us in full. And clearly it kind of freaked out here because it gave us, the answer is 11, about, I don't know, 20 times. So... Small models can be more difficult to use, but I think they're still really powerful. And although it takes a little bit more skill to know how to use them, the potential value of them is immense. So let me know if you have used these models before, if you've messed around fine-tuning them. What's also cool with smaller models like this is you can fine-tune them with way less hardware, um, even if you have, you know, like an RTX 4060 or even a 3060, which is kind of cool if you're getting into this stuff. Uh, the fundamentals are the same, so if you can do it here, you can do it with Llama 70B or Mixed Roll 8x70B. So, as always, I hope you learned something. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.